Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am your apostle, Apostle Alfredo Florence. It is a privilege and an honor to come before you this morning to bring the word of God. I pray a fresh anointing. I pray a fresh revelation today. I pray an understanding today. I pray that your heart is open to receive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, it's just good to be alive. So many people are dying. So many people are leaving this world. But God has given us another day, amen, to praise him, to rejoice in him, to do the work that he's called us to do. And I don't know about you, but I am grateful and I am so um, excited to be able to do something for the kingdom of God. Amen. So we are going to get started. We're going to jump right in to finish up our Christian responsibilities. We won't finish today, but we're going to continue in our Christian responsibility, a lesson that we have laid out that God has given us. I think it is important that we understand the importance of Christian responsibility because as a Christian, we have responsibilities. And I know a lot of times we don't want to uh, take on responsibility. We don't want to um, be a part of the body of Christ because we know that it's going to acquire some responsibilities from us. So then therefore we, sh we, we have a tendency to shun or to, um, to shy away from being totally committed and accountable to God because we know some things is going to be required of us. But responsibilities goes with everyday life. You have responsibilities on your job. You have the responsibility um, as um, as a husband, as a wife, as a child. You have a responsibility in your community. You have a responsibility to yourself. Amen. So why is it so hard for us to take on the responsibilities of God? I see people being responsible in every arena. I mean, just so sold out to other things. But when it comes to being sold out and taking hold and doing the responsibilities that God himself has given us, we don't want any part in the responsibilities of God. But if we have our own thing, oh, we're going to be responsible. We're going to make sure we jump in and dive into that responsibility. So let us take time to put forth the best effort that we can to carry out the responsibilities of God. And at the end of the day, when we have to stand before God, this is what's going to matter. All the other stuff, it's not going to matter. You think it's going to matter. But I guarantee you it's not going to matter because only what we do for Christ is going to last. Amen. Let us go to the throne of grace with a prayer. Father, we thank you for being our heavenly father. We thank you for being a prayer hearing God. We thank you, God, for that you've given us access to come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. We thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for what you've already done for us all out on Calvary's cross. And I pray, God, that this message go forth today, that you will anoint my ears, my eyes, my tongue, my words. Father God, know the words of God that goes from my lips, God, into the, uh, and impart uh, knowledge to your people, God, as they hear the word of God. I know their ears to hear. I know their heart today that they may receive what the Spirit of the Lord is always, again, saying to the church. God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Well, last week, we talked about Christian responsibilities, but we talked about growing and maturing in Jesus Christ. So today we're going to talk about, um, we're going to continue to talk about maturing Christians, growing and maturing. Amen. So it's important that we understand the importance of growing and maturing in Christ. Mature Christians less depend on themselves and more dependent on God. Mature Christians are less dependent on themselves and more dependent on God. Therefore, that lets us know when we're mature, when we're when we're growing up in God, it lets us know that without Christ, we can do nothing. But with Christ, we can do all things. So the Bible tells us that we, we without Christ, we can do anything. So when you mature and you're grown up in God, you put your total dependency, you put your total faith, Amen. You put your, your your total being 
in God. You you say, God, I can't do this without you. God, I'm completely uh, reliant on you to handle this. I'm completely trusting you to move. I'm completely trusting you to um, take care of the situation. Because if we try to do things, we'll mess it up. Because truly, truly, you guys know, I always say we are limited. We are limited on what we can do. Amen. But we're talking about putting our total dependency on God, who is unlimited. It's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too big for God. There's nothing too strong for God. Amen. There's nothing that, that God cannot handle. What we've got to learn to do is learn how to totally depend on God, totally trust God, can to totally you know, give it over to God, the one who can handle it. The Bible tells us, amen, in Psalms, that we should cast all of our cares upon the Lord, but he cares for us. So what we have to do is learn how to totally depend. And when I think about totally depend, I think about just totally just giving way, just leaning completely on the Lord and let him hold us up, let him catch us, let him sustain us, let him carry us through everything that we are going through. Amen. So totally dependency on God. Immature Christians try to get in and try to be God themselves. And you're not God. You can handle so only you can handle only so much. And then you yourself then are gonna have to turn around and say, Okay, God, this is just too much. You're gonna throw your hands up and say, Okay, God, I surrender because even this is too much for me. So when we're immature, we have a tendency to try to take on things of ourselves. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to be able to handle anything alone by yourself. So let's learn how to depend on God. Amen. When we look at Matthew 19 and 26, it says, with, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. So when we want things to happen in our lives and we're expecting God to move in our lives or, or we're expecting God to uh, handle situation, all things are possible. Amen. With God, with God, with him, with him, together, you and God. God being the forefront, you being behind God, you and God. Amen. But God will be the one. He will be the driving force. Amen. To make sure that all things are possible in your life. We have got to do, amen, to do just what the scripture says, amen, and understand without God, we can do nothing, but with God, all things are possible. We got to understand that, amen, because it's not wise to think that you can do this on your own. That's not wise, amen? That's not wise. So also, when we look at First John 4 and 4, it says, greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. The greater one who is still God lives on the inside of you. And so if you have God dwelling on the inside of you, then there's nothing you can't do because it's not you. It's the God in you. We can never take God's glory. I mean, it's just like a, 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 the power of God, the the presence of God that's on the inside of us, amen, that stands up in us, amen, and uses us to a capacity that we can never be used without God, amen. So when we stand to preach, when we stand to teach, when we stand to sing, when we stand to pray, when we stand to give the scripture, when we stand to exalt the Lord, amen, and testify, amen, and the power of God moves, it's not you. Never think that it's you. Know that it's the power of God, amen, on the inside of us. It means that you're mature enough to understand that you have decreased and that God has increased. It's the, 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 it's the maturity in you that says that I have made myself available to God. I'm going to step back and I'm going to let God step up and I'm going to allow God to use me. I'm just a yielded vessel for, for, vessel for him to use me. You've got to mature, be mature enough to understand and know that. Amen? Not only that, but Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ. We have got to go through Christ. Amen? It's got to be through Christ. Amen. That's, uh, that, that we can do all things. So don't ever think again that you can do this on your own because you can't. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it through Christ Jesus. If you're going to do it, it's going to be him. Amen. So mature Christians, amen, 
are less dependent on themselves and more dependent on God. Amen. So it's never us. It's always God. Totally dependent on Christ alone. Our growth and our success and our maturity only comes through abiding, abiding in Christ alone. So abiding, what does abiding mean? Abiding means to stay in God, dwell in God. Amen. Amen. Just sup with God, just staying there, just abiding in him, just soaking in him, just living in him. Amen. Not in and out, not back and forth. Not up and down, but completely always abiding in him. He who abides in me and I in him. Amen. You can ask whatsoever you shall and it shall be done unto you. Amen. But we got to learn how to be abiding in Christ Jesus. And then not only that, but in Christ alone. Don't put your, 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 um, all your hope in Christ, then put all your hope in man, put all your hope in your job, all your hope in your finances, and try to add God in there somewhere. No, Christ alone. Totally dependent on God. We don't take, uh, uh, we don't have, to, we, we can't take the credit for anything. It's not our job to take the credit. We have got to give the credit to God. It's, it, it, we can't take the credit for what God does in our lives, but humbly allow Christ to take the forefront. And be in charge of our lives. Amen. But mature Christians make every effort to build their faith. Make every effort. Make every effort to build their faith. When we look at 2 Peter, amen, 1, verses 5 through 11, it tells us to add to your faith. Add to your faith. What does it take to add to your faith? Now, in, in order for your faith to grow, just like in order for us to grow, we've got to add some things. So mature Christians make every effort to build their faith. So again, how do we build our faith? What does it take to build your faith? The Bible tells us in 2 Peter, again, it says, add to your faith goodness. Goodness. Add to your faith goodness. Do that which is good. And you'll have praise of the same. Be good. Learn how to be good. Amen. Goodness. And then add to your faith goodness. Knowledge. Knowledge is power. Amen. The more you know, the better off you'll, you'll be. Yes. The more you know. You We need to know. We need to gain knowledge. Amen. And then not only knowledge, but self-control. Church, the body of Christ, we need to learn how to have some kind of self-control. My goodness. We need to have self-control. We need to be able to handle situations when they come our way. Everything should cause us to fly off the handle, get mad, you know, uh, cuss somebody out, you know, always getting angry. The Bible says anger lies in the bosom of fool. You're a fool if you can't have any self-control and you can't control yourself just because somebody said something, just because something happened to you, you always find out the handle. That's not good and that's not God. So add to your faith, goodness, knowledge, self-control, and perseverance. Persevere. Persevere. We've got to learn how to have some perseverance. we got to learn how to uh, amen, go through stuff and hang in there. Amen. And persevere. Endure. Amen. Until, until uh, endure to the end. We've got to have some perseverance and learn how to uh, uh, go through things and just, 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 just stay in it and don't give way. Don't give up. Don't turn around. But learn how to persevere. Amen. Through the storm, through the rain, through all the things that may come up against us, because we're going to have things that come up against us, but we've got to learn how to, amen, persevere. And to persevere, there is godliness. God says, I've given you everything that pertains unto life and godliness. We need to learn how to have godliness in our life. We need to be godlike. Godlike. We used to be the devil like, but now we need to have. God, we need to be godlike. We need to have some godliness. I mean, when people look at you, they, they need to be able to say that that's a godly woman. That's a godly man. Amen. Um, mutual affection. Love. Love. We need to have love one for another. That's what the world and the devil and the church is missing now. It's God's love, the agape love, the kind of love that only God can give. Amen. The only love that 
only God can empower us to do because, you know, we got these other kind of loves. You know, we got this temporary love. We got this uh, love that if you love me, I'll love you. We got love on condition. Amen. But we don't have the agape love. I love you anyway. I, I love you beyond what you said about me. I learned I love you beyond what you did to me. I love you anyway. I don't have to like what you've done. And I don't have to be in agreement with it. And I don't always have to be around you, but I do have to love you. That's the word of God. That's the character of God. That's the, the, the desire that God has for us is that we love you one another as I have loved you. So we as believers, as body of Christ, we have got to get to the to having this, the kind of love that God wants us to love. So we got to add that to our faith. Amen. If these things be in us, amen, and abound, amen, if these things be in us, love, and doing our best to love both Christians and non-Christians. If all these things, thoughtliness and knowledge and self-control and perseverance and, and amen and, and mature affection and love is all these things be in us and abound. That means if they stay there, amen, then we should neither be barren nor unfruitful. Amen. And the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If we can get all of these things and add them to our faith. Amen. We'll see signs of maturity. And you wonder why you're not mature. You wonder why you're still struggling. You wonder why you're still getting mad about small things and the little things. Amen. Everything still bothers you. You've been saved five years, but the same thing still bothers you now that it did when you first got saved. That's a sign of immaturity. Amen. And the Bible says, he who lacks these things is short-sighted. Amen. Even to blindness and have forgotten that he was cleansed from his old ways. My God. So, we have got to make sure that we are, amen, uh, uh, adding to our faith as Christians. we got to learn how to add to our faith. First, two things I want to uh, end with to a Christian is don't depend on yourself. Learn how to depend on God. Amen. And then make every effort to add to your faith. I mean, because God gives us the measure of faith. But then even disciples ask, Lord, increase, help us to increase our faith. We want to increase our faith. We need to increase our faith. So now that you're, when you, on this level, you had a measure of faith. And now you come to this level and now you have another level of faith. So our faith needs to continue to grow even as we grow. Our faith needs to prosper even, even as we prosper. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the more you hear the word of God, the more your faith should grow. But let us make sure that our faith, amen, is growing and our faith is maturing as we are maturing. Amen. So let us not to uh, abound in these things so that we can be barren. I mean, so that we can be fruitful and not barren. I mean, God wants us to be fruitful and multiply. That's what he said. He said, be fruitful and multiply. But if you're not amen, adding to your faith and if you're not maturing, you cannot be fruitful. You will not multiply. You will be barren. You'll be lacking. Amen. You will have everything that you need to become a true Christian. I mean, a mature Christian. And then not only that, you cannot be a mature Christian and um and 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 and, and think that you're going to be able to do all that God wants you to do if you're not mature. You got to mature. You got to grow. You've got to increase. You got to have some sign of growing in God. Amen. It's time to grow up in God. It's time. It's time to be a big kid in God, a big woman of God, a big man of God. Say, so I've matured. I'm growing. I mean, you ought to see some growth. Look at yourself. Take an examination of yourself and see have you really grown in God? Are you still a baby? Are you still an infant? Are you still immature? Amen. Because guess what? I guarantee if you look at your life, you're going to say, well, I'm not mature here in here, this area. I'm not mature in that area. You're going to see some things in your life where you know that you're not mature in. And then that should be enough to, to urge you to get some kind of um, urgency to say, I need to grow. Let me grow more in the Lord. Amen. So as we move on to our next Christian responsibility, amen, look at verse um when we look at the word of God and the next one says, and to put away old sinful ways. And we look at this and we pull this from Ephesians, amen, chapter um, four, verse 17 to 24 and the Ephesians five, two through 14. So this is 
where we get this Christian responsibility come from. And it, what it talks about is Paul compared the Christian's life to stripping off the dirty clothes of a sinful past and putting on the snowy white robe of Christ's righteousness. So Paul gives us illustration of what putting away old sins, amen, and our old sinful ways mean. It means stripping off the old filthiness, the old way, the old way of thinking, the old way of doing things, the old way of acting. He says, stripping those things off. Amen. And then putting on the snowy white robe of Jesus Christ's righteousness. So you can't be, amen, a born again believer and still living in sin, still have your old sinful ways. We can't practicing. I didn't say that we wouldn't fall into sin sometimes, but when you're practicing sin and you're practicing sin, you keep doing this day in and day out all the time. Amen. And even, um, even when you fall, if you keep falling into the same thing, then that means that you haven't been delivered. That means that there's still an issue. That still means that your flesh is still take, have control and dominion over you. Amen. And that's not the ways of Christ. Then that means that you have not put away your old sinful ways and your own sinful nature. Because therefore, if you had, then you wouldn't keep be falling in the same way and or in the same thing. My goodness, okay, I may have fallen over here. I may have stumped my toe. I may have broke my leg. I may have, you know, broke my finger or whatever. It, okay, you may be falling, but why are you following in the same thing all the time? David said that it was good for me that I was afflicted, that I may learn. Evidently, when you fell in that area, you didn't learn from it because you fell again in it. And then you fell again in it. And then you fell again in it. And therefore, you have not learned. Amen. Or, or it could be a stronghold or it could be a generational curse that has attacked you and it's got a stronghold on you and you can't break away. And therefore, that's another thing. And therefore, that's when you need to go to God. And say, okay, God, I'm struggling right here. Can you help me? Go and get you some help. Take it to God. Or if you got somebody that you can talk to about it, take it to them and say, okay, help me with this. I, I need some earth for the help. Hmm? But I'm going to tell you, can't nobody deliver you but God. But there are people that can help you if you're willing to receive the help. Amen. I mean, you got to, how bad do you want it? But I wanted to be delivered. I didn't care what nobody thought or said about me. I got delivered. Amen. So we have got to, Paul give us a good illustration, taking off the filthy and putting on the robe of righteousness of Christ Jesus. Amen. And then we understand clearly what 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Amen. So we can't be in Christ and still do the uh, same old things. Something has got to change. What has changed about you? What has come? Be, what's different about you? Amen. And then you were able to maintain that difference. What was it? What is it? Are you still acting the same way, doing the same thing? You know, and then just in church, being in church does not make you a Christian. Let's get over that mentality. We, we're not religious people. We're not religious people. We're born again, blood-bought believers that have a real relationship with Christ. We are not religious. Religion will tell you just because you go to church, then you're okay. That's what religion will tell you. Religion will tell you because you sing or because you preach or because you pray in church or because you teach Sunday school that you're okay. This is it. No, it's not. Those are the works. These are works. But when you are born again, you come to church, you do the work. Faith without works is dead. You do the work, but when you go home, guess what? You still live in the same way you were when you were in church. Amen. You don't get behind closed doors. Amen. And live a double life. Because a lot of us are living a double life. Amen. Some of us get behind closed doors and we shut those doors and we lock those doors. Amen. And, and we close the blinds. And amen. We, 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 you know, we, we let the garage down and then we think that we're shut in from the eyes of this world. But guess what? The eyes of the Lord goes to and four in the earth. It's nothing that's hidden from God. You can get in the deepest place you want to be. Paul, uh, uh, David said, amen. If I make my bed in hell, 
guess what? God is going to be there. So it doesn't matter where you go in this earth. God is still there and he sees all and he knows all. Amen. So don't try to live a double life thinking God don't know. God will deal with you. God will speak to you. God will show you the error of your ways. Amen. Yes, he will. Amen. We think we hear from man. It's just like King David. David tried to hide all of his sin from man. He said, uh, Nathan told him, he said, you get this in secret. He said, but guess what? I'm going to expose you openly. Mm -hmm. But guess what? He did it in secret. Only didn't nobody hardly know, but God knew. That's all that mattered. And then when Nathan called him out, guess what? He knew then that God had his eye on him and that his secret sin was uncovered, that God knew his sin and God knew everything that he had did. The people didn't know that David had committed murder, a kill Uriah. The people didn't know that. The people didn't know he was sneaking by Sheba in at night when everybody was asleep. The people didn't know that. Maybe one or two people. But guess what? God knew. And the, the main one that really knows is God. And then when God, David knew that God knew, it caused him to be sorrowful. Amen. Hallelujah. And get on his face and pray and get to live. And you never hear about David in that place again. It, that was a good affliction for David because he learned. He married Bathsheba. They even had another baby. You don't hear about David stepping out anymore. No, you don't. Because he learned. Amen. He took off in his, uh, his filthy rags and his filthy clothes of sin and adultery. Amen. Fornication. He took those off. Amen. Then he put on the robe of Christ's righteousness. So if we're going to be in Christ, we have got to be new creations, new creatures. We should no longer walk as a Gentile, those who are without Christ. How are we going to be in the body of Christ trying to tell somebody else how to live and then we live in it a different way? We're trying to tell them what's right. Then maybe we don't tell people what's right. But I guarantee you, when you don't stand up for righteousness and you support evil, you support sin, you're standing in the way of sinners. Blessed is a man who walked not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful. You are standing in the way of sinners. You're standing in the way of somebody's progress. You're standing in the way of somebody's salvation. And you're going to be held accountable for that. The blood, of, of, the blood is going to be required at your hand. You are to hold it righteous. This is not the time to compromise. If you want a friend, then guess what? You need to find you a godly friend. But you need to stay away from these people that wants to compromise. Amen. And, and pedicate you and, 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 and babyfy you when you're wrong. I'm not trying to say be hard and judgmental. But some people need to know, amen, that you are, God is serious about your lifestyle. A lifestyle, people's lifestyle have got them in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Our lifestyle has got us, some of us, in a lot of trouble. Amen. I remember mean, back in the day, it got me in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. It got me in trouble. I learned from that. I'm sorry, I don't want my name smeared all over the place. And I don't, and then guess what? Sometimes God guards you from having your name smear, smeared all over the place. But sometimes he'll get you in another way. Sometimes he'll allow sickness to come on your body. Sometimes he'll allow things to happen to you just because of that. Hmm? Because the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. So when we sin, there is a price for sin. So don't think, oh, God is good and God is good. Yes, he is. But sin has to be dealt with. And it will be dealt with. Sometimes in ways that we don't we don't understand. But God is in charge of that. Do have compassion. Amen. Considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. But guess what? Don't support nobody's sin. No, don't support it. Let them know the seriousness of it, especially when they know Christ, especially when they're anointed, especially when they have a, a call of God on their life. Yeah, this may be a test and this may be something that you got to go through, but live through it and move on and live past it. And don't keep falling in the same place because the Bible says that we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Go on. Amen. Uh, to perfection. Go on and be delivered. Amen. So when we look at 2 Timothy 2 and 19, it says, let everyone that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Church, if we're going to name the name of Christ, as we're going to stand up and we're going to say that we're born again, that we're Christians, that we love Jesus, amen, that we are new creations in Christ Jesus. I'm no longer a sinner, but I'm a saint. You know, I'm in church. I'm in church. 
Well, okay, then, if you're going to get up and you're going to name the name of Christ, you want people to look at you as a Christian. You want people to know that you're a man or woman of God. Then you got to you got to depart from iniquity. You cannot have both. You can't have God in the world. You can't have sin and righteousness. You cannot. You cannot. You got to choose you just at whom you're going to serve. If you're going to serve God, serve God. If you're going to serve Bill, get on out there and serve Bill. Stop naming the name of Christ and then still trying to uh, live in iniquity and still sinning and living in Christ. Still uh, worshiping idol gods and living in Christ. Still doing the old things that you've always done and living in Christ. Let's not do that. If you're going to name the name of Christ, okay, strive every day to live for Christ. Strive every day to live, but, but, but we got to learn how to depart from iniquity. If, if, I, if I'm going to get out there, everybody know I'm a preacher, everybody know I'm a pastor, then guess what? I need to make sure that I'm departing from iniquity so that people won't say, oh, I thought she was a preacher. I thought she was a woman of God. I thought she was this and I thought she was that. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to hear nobody say they thought I was anything that I'm not. I want people to know that when they see me, they know I'm a woman of God. When they see me, they know that that woman loves Jesus. That when they see me, they know that that woman is real. And they say they said I was perfect. None of us are perfect. All have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. But they know my character. They know your character. Amen? So let's make sure that we are uh, departing from iniquity. And if we want the name of the Christ, if we want to name the name of Christ, let us stop doing wrong. Let's stop doing wrong and start doing what's right. Amen? Because the Bible tells us that God knows those that are his. He knows. He already knows. Amen. You know he know. So he already knows those that are his. So in order for us to put away the old sinful ways, it, Mark 4 and 28 tells us that we have to leave some things behind. And you're trying to depart from your old ways. You got to learn how to leave some things behind. Amen. We got to do like the woman did in Mark 4 and 28. Amen. She got saved. Jesus met her at the well. She was, amen, shacking. She was living, amen, her own way, doing her own thing, you know. And guess what? She met Jesus at the well. He told her everything that she ever done. And listen, when God comes and visits you and tell you some things, you better take God at his word. Amen. Because this woman had a choice. She could have said, who do you think you're talking to? You don't know anything about me. And go right on, she could have went right on back home shacking with whatever she was doing. And, and people hear God all the time, but guess what? They keep, keep going the same way. It's just like the rich young ruler. He came to Jesus and said, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said, you know, go and sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor and come follow me. <laughs> they bad. He got on his his donkey and he went right on by his business. The Bible said he, walked, he, he went away sorrowful because guess what? He heard the word of salvation. He heard the word of eternal life. Jesus didn't send the message to anybody. Jesus spoke to him himself and told him what he must do to have eternal life. But guess what he did? He turned away sorrowful because he wasn't willing to give up all of his riches. It's easier for a camera to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. So, so this woman at the well, could have done the same thing that the rich young ruler did. Then he, she, he, she could have walked away sorrowful too and say, hmm, I'm going back to checking because I love what I'm doing. Well, that's just how some of us do. God speaks to us, tells us, warns us, gives us signs, gives us, uh, you know, uh, uh, warnings and stuff like that. And we do just like the man on the donkey, the rich young ruler. We go away. And we said, I, I'm not ready to give that up. That's not what I want to do. And we continue to live our lives and we miss heaven because we so caught up. But the woman at the well, that's my girl, the woman at the well, she said, you know what? I'm going to drop this stuff. The Bible says she left some things behind. So whatever it was that she left behind, she dropped it. And she ran into a city and said, come see a man. We got to learn how to drop some things. We got to learn how to leave some things behind in order for us to put away our old sinful ways. We got to be willing to do that. The next thing we got to do is we must um, put away some things. As Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 say, we got to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily beset us. 
So we got some things, some weights, and we got some, some sins. We got to know the difference. Some things are weights, some things are sins. But the Bible tells us to lay them both away. We can't choose, well, I'm going to keep my weights, but I'm going to lay aside my sins. And because guess what? If you keep uh, that weight, it's eventually going to weigh you down. Uh, I'm going to keep my sin and I'm going to get rid of my sin and I'm going to keep my weight. Or uh, vice versa. But guess what? The Bible tells us to lay aside every weight and sin. In other words, get rid of both of them. Get rid of both of them. Because either one is going to cause you harm. So when we're trying to put away these old simple ways, we got to lay uh, some things aside. Amen. We got to leave some things behind. And then we got to get delivered. Amen. Not only that, Mark 16 and 19 tells us about Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene amen, had seven demons. And Jesus himself cast out seven demons, amen, from Mary Magdalene. And she was the one of the best faithful followers of Jesus Christ after she was delivered. So we need to lay aside some things. We've got to leave some things behind. And then it's important for us to understand the power of deliverance. we got to get delivered because some things we can stop doing, but there's some things that we need to be delivered from. And those are the things that got the stronghold on us that keep us going back to doing the same old things, to keep us going back to the, our same old ways, to keep us going back to the same things that we've always done. So we got to understand the importance of getting delivered. Amen. Mary Magdalene had seven demons. Seven. And guess what? She got rid of her demons. She, God got rid of them for her, but she wanted him to be, she wanted to be delivered from her demons. And not only that, but then the woman at the well, she left some stuff behind her. And went on unto to perfection. The apostle Paul, amen, was riding along on his horse down the Damascus road. And guess what? The spirit of God knocked him off his beast. And he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And when he was starting now, Jesus, God blinded him. He told him to go down the straight street. Go down the straight street. And there was somebody that was going to teach him and tell him how to do the things of Christ and learn so he could learn of Christ. And he did that. Amen. And when his eyes became open, amen, the scales were removed from his eyes. And Paul went on to do a great work for the Lord. Oh, God Almighty, he did a great work for the Lord. He wrote the New Testament. He was one, amen, of the, the apostles, amen, one of the greatest apostles that ever lived. He left a legacy for us. He wrote most of the New Testament, teach, teaching us and telling us how we as believers should strive and live for Christ. Amen. How to lay aside every weight and sin. How to make it even with a thorn in our side. Amen. How to uh, deny ourselves and take up the cross and follow after Jesus Christ. Amen. How amen, to walk in the spirit that we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Hallelujah. How to walk, amen, hallelujah, circumspectly. How to walk in love. How to walk. He taught us how to walk. He taught us how to walk this Christian life. Amen. But we cannot name the name of Christ, amen, and still have sin and iniquity in our lives. This is a time, church. Amen. Uh, Jesus is soon to come. We're living in the last days. We don't know when he's coming. Amen. But when he comes, he's coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Will you be found guilty? Will you have spot, wrinkles, and blemish? Will you still have on your old filthy rags? Will you still have on your old filthy mindset, old filthy heart, old filthy nasty hands? Hallelujah. Who shall enter into the holy hills of the Lord? He that have a clean hand and a clean heart. Amen. You got to have clean hands. You got to have a clean mind. Creating a clean heart. You got. We got to be clean when Jesus comes. Amen. We can't be spotted up with filthy, filthiness and nastiness and hate and anger and bitterness and softness and all this mess that's going on in our lives. No, you may not be able to uh, quote every scripture. You may not know how to pray a, a 10 minutes. But guess what? Your lifestyle should still represent Jesus Christ. You ought to live a holy life. Amen. Holy, the best of your ability. That's what we need to strive to do. Put off this old simple ways. Amen. And when God himself delivers us when God himself set us free we should do what Galatians 5 and 1 tells us stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage amen don't keep going back 
to being a slave to sin. This is what it says. He says, stand fast in the liberty by which Christ has made you free. If God has made you free, stand fast in that freedom. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. And when God don't have you nothing, and when he sets us free, you are free indeed. You are free then to live life to the fullest. Amen. But some of us, we get free. Amen. God has swept the house clean. Amen. And guess what? We open the door for the enemy to come back in. Hallelujah. And then now we are again a slave to sin, a slave to unrighteousness, slave to the enemy. Amen. And when you open that door, baby, you ain't no kind of what's going to come in. Anything can come in. And you're going to pick up several more demons worse than you had the first time. And then now it's hard for you to get free. You didn't open yourself up to these, all these spirits and you're thinking you're okay, but when you're not, hmm? No, you're not. It's a just not a return again or be entangled. Entangled. Because guess what? When you go back, you're going to get entangled. Have you ever been tangled up in something? And if you ain't, if you mean, if you get tangled up in the spider web, you got to fight a whole lot of different ways to kind of get it all off of you. You got entangled up, amen, with a yoke. And a yoke. It's hard to break. I remember going up on the farm and we had cows and they put a yoke on their neck. And the reason why the yoke was on their neck so that they couldn't get through the wires. They may could have gotten their head, head through the, the wire. But that's what that yoke was long and big. It only allowed them to get so far. So guess what? So then guess what? If we, when God sets us free, and then we get entangled again, we got a yoke on our neck. And guess what? That yoke is not going to allow you to only go but so far. Trying to get back to God, then no, you got the yoke. You want to get back to God, but you got a yoke. You want to be free again, but now you got a yoke. It's going to take somebody else. Amen. Because I remember when the cows would try to get out, the yoke, some of the yoke would get on the outside of the fence. Amen. And the cow would be on the inside of the fence. And guess what? They were trying to get out, but they couldn't. So guess what? We had to come and we had to help straighten the yoke out so that the cow can get his neck back into the fence. Amen. From what he was trying to get out of. In other words, he was trying to get out, but the yoke had him. And so we had to have help. Sometimes you got to have help to get that yoke off of you because now you have returned again to a yoke of bondage. And that's not only that, but who wants to be a slave? Now, they done freed us from natural slave, physical slavery, but now some of us are in spiritual bondage, spiritual slavery. I don't want to be a slave. I was a slave for 28 years, and I hate it. When I look back now, I hated it, but when I was in it, I loved it. I thought I was you know, having a good time, thought I was doing the right thing. But when I look back over my life, I was in bondage, and I was a slave to sin and unrighteousness, and I was headed for destruction and death. That's where I was headed and almost got killed out there fooling around with the enemy being in slavery. Let me tell you something. If God has set you free, stay free. Amen. Don't keep going back being a slave to sin. As he sets you free, whom the son set free, it's free indeed. You are indeed free. So stay free. Use your liberty to worship God. Use your liberty to work in the kingdom of God. Use your liberty to serve God and, and praise God and do a work for God. Use your liberty, amen, to, to build the kingdom of God. Be a witness for God and testify for God. And, amen. And live in righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Learn, learn, leave, I mean, I mean, allow your liberty to, to, to for good. Use your liberty for good. Amen. And not and not allow image to bring you back into bondage again, into slavery again. That's not what God has for us. Amen. So I'm going to get ready to leave you now. We talked about Christian maturity. Amen. Be dependent on our God. Amen. Hallelujah. And not yourselves. Amen. Make every effort to, to, um, to build your faith. And then we went over and said, put away the old sinful ways. Amen. Making sure that we are uh, a new Christ creation in Christ Jesus. If we're going to name the name of Christ, we need to depart from iniquity. We need to list aside some things. We need to put some things behind us, leave some things behind us, and get delivered. Amen. So that we, amen, can go on, amen, unto perfection. Amen. So I hope that you were blessed today. I pray that you got something from the word of God. I pray that your spirit was filled, and I pray that you were fed a good word to the good meal. 
I hope that apostle, amen, prepared a good meal for you today. I pray that you take the time, amen, to pray, to get in the word, meditate on the word, and fast in the seat of the Lord. Amen. While he may be found, call on him while he is yet near. God bless you. Amen. Just a reminder, amen, about my talk show. You better say that talk show is about to be aired in just a few more days. Amen. We are a little bit behind because we had some technical difficulties, but that's what we're still moving forward. Amen. No weapon formed against us shall prosper and nothing can stop us now. Amen. But do me a favor. Go to my YouTube page under Alzada Florence. Amen. Like, share, and subscribe. Amen. And watch out for the You Better Say That talk show. Very excited. God bless you and we love you. See you next time. Bye-bye.